So hello everyone, I think we can get started. Um, today uh, in our webinar, I will present you some techniques and some possibilities and features of Canva, how you can feed the system with your everyday work. So the work becomes transparent to everyone on the team and you create a um, single point of truth when it comes to work in your organization. Uh, my name is Michael Subotkiewicz and uh, I am the Canva product owner. I have been with the team now for over 10 years building this product. So one can say I know everything about it. So um, I'm happy to be here and uh, yeah, let's get started with the presentation. Here's some housekeeping for this webinar. So please uh, interact with us. So submit questions using the QA feature in Microsoft Teams. And after the um, webinar, we will pick some questions uh, and uh, answer them. And uh, all questions you ask will be, will be answered even later after the webinar. And um, of course, the, the recording of the webinar will be available on our website. So uh, when you go to canboapp.com slash webinars, there will be the recording a um, few days after the event of today. And please also there in the, in the um, uh, webinars link that you see here on the, on the slide, there is a way where there is a, there is a form where you can submit your own ideas for future webinars. And um, yeah, we, we are looking forward to your ideas and uh, we will definitely address them um, as uh, we are, you know, focused on, on our customers and on, on their needs. Okay, the agenda for today is, uh, first of all, I will um, reflect a little on the uh, Canva structure. Then um, we will try to organize some, some work in, in, in Canva. I will, I will have a, a practical example for that. Then we talk a little bit about the board permissions um, and, 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 and what, what can be done with, 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 with which permission. Then we, we will um, dive in a little bit into the Canva card statuses. Then I have prepared um, some examples for 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 different kind of work that that you can can have in your in your company, and then uh, I have gathered some some uh, basic principles um, I would like, uh, and I would like to share them with you, so um, you become more aware uh, of, um, of of how to work with Canva or similar systems. Okay, let's get started. So first of all. The challenge we are trying to solve with Canva, or uh, especially also in this webinar, is that the work that we uh, receive every day is basically um, scattered across different silos. And obviously this is email, yes, but um, the other way people try to organize themselves in, in companies is to use spreadsheets um, or, or personal to-dos or notes, um, protocols, things like that. Um, it is a way to, to, to manage, um, you know, work and, 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 and try to stay informed about the, the progress of it and so on. But the problem um, that it doesn't really solve is that there is a single point of truth. So basically one uh, area or one system where you can always have a look and and see uh, what is going on, who is working on what, are we late, are we on time, are there any any obstacles on the way to, to fulfill a, a project or whatever, that's basically missing and, and this is this can be solved with Canva, um, but the system alone doesn't do it, you have also to apply special techniques. So the solution is um, basically to create one a single uh, a source of truth uh, for your company or for your team. Uh, it depends uh, uh, how you're planning to roll out Canva in, in, in your organization. But um, uh, Canva is very focused on this visibility and, and, and collaboration, of course. So um, Canva makes things very transparent. So um, it is very easy to, 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 to find work to find um, the, the status of it um, and 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 uh, yeah collaborate with with others on it 
and, and don't repeat, don't duplicate uh, things. So I think the, the best way to show you how you can, you can, you can put your work or, or your team's work or your company work into the Canva system is first to understand its structure. So it all starts with the Canva installation for your company, which is depicted here as this organization. Then below that, you get board collections. So board collections are, as the name implies, a collection of boards um, where um, every user in the organization can create his own board collection that will contain um, his boards or her boards that, 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 that she likes uh, to work on or that, that, that are needed for, for her work. But there's also a way that departments or, or other um, areas um, uh, can create uh, board collections that, co that contain boards um, of a certain structure and, and, and interest to a certain part or area of, of the organization. Then the next level, inside of the board collections, you can use board groups to structure the boards uh, um, for better navigation. Uh, for example, you could, you could have um, a board collection named, for example, um, Germany. And then inside uh, of this board collection, you could have um, board groups named uh, after cities. And then inside of those board groups, you would have then the boards that would probably be, for example, your buildings in those cities or maybe projects you're doing in those cities. So this is the way how you can structure a larger uh, amount of information using this, this, this concept of, of board collections and board groups. And obviously, um, board, collection, board collections uh, contain board groups, board groups uh, contain boards. And um, this is uh, this is where the boards come uh, into play the first time, and um, uh, as you can see, a board group can contain many boards. But um, th there's one thing that that should be mentioned that sometimes you might need to have uh, one board, like for example, this board A. It is um, it, it, it exists at the same time in in different board groups. So I have board A as part of a board group A here in this, this board collection one, but I have also um, the board A as part of board collection two, and I have it even in the board collection three. It's the same board, but being um, being part of, of uh, more uh, contexts in the, in the company. For example, that could be a board that has your contracts. So this board A organizes the contracts for the company. And as you can imagine, the contracts are needed in, in several areas of the company. That's why the board appears or is part of, of, of several board groups, because these board groups represent several areas. But um, we do not duplicate. We just uh, give the possibility to have the board in, in, in different contexts as you need it. And obviously, in a board, you have lists. Um, that help you to structure the cards um, uh, of, of, of tasks of, of a board. And then inside of a, of a list, you can obviously have, have cards. So with this structure, you can easily master any complexity in any size of, of organization. Uh, you only have to come up um, with the idea which, which part of, of, of Canva, which feature of Canva, which level in Canva will be used for which level in your organization um, to represent it. Here are some, some examples how we can work with, um, with, with board collections. For example, you could, uh, you could create a board collection for your departments. So let's say we, I have a board, a board collection called departments and in, inside I have directly boards um, uh, like a board for marketing, for sales, IT, uh, engineering, and support. Um, I could have, as, as already mentioned, I could, I could have a board collection called countries, for example, and then I would have a board group called Germany, and then inside of the board group that is part of these countries, I would have um, um, boards representing um, uh, each city 
in, in, in that country, for example. So, so um, just by, by this example, it should be clear to you that, that you, you can, you can, you can um, use or you can build the structure the way your organization is, is built or, 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 or let's say the way you want to organize your work inside of the organization. For example, I, I, here I have this uh, uh, board group. Um, let me pin this here. Uh, I have this, this board collection called departments. So now here I have the, the first board group, marketing, sales, and so on. And now here I could create new boards or add existing boards uh, to, this, uh, to this board group, to this board group inside of this board collection. Um, or I have another structure which, which, is, which is organized by clients. So now I have here um, uh, a group that can uh, show me my VIP clients, my big clients, my medium, my small clients, and and um, you can uh, drag and drop uh, these elements uh, on the on the screen as you like um, to uh, yeah to basically create a representation of a structure that, that that you would like to see. Every time you can change the name or remove a group um, and so on. Another structure would be, for example, by product types. So I have now, uh, um, uh, for example, I am now a communication company and I have my mobile 5G products, my streaming products, my prepaid product, my internet service provider product, my cloud products. And, and, and for each product, um, I could have a board, um, for example, for sales or even all boards, like from development, uh, engineering support and sales. Uh, uh, for 5G could be structured like that for streaming the same and so on and so on. So and 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 obviously all those um, board collections can be easily shared with others. So I just uh, can go here into the details and um, I can uh, even have a description for uh, for for um, um, uh, for a board collection. But I can also uh, uh, work with users. So I have owners. These users are able to to change the the board collection, so add boards, remove boards, uh, change the structure, the order. And I have visitors which can only see the the the, um, uh, the board collections and use them. So usually uh, for a department or for a, for a, for a product or whatever, I I have uh, at least two uh, owners, and then I can invite users either by one by one or using a user group. For example, a user group uh, based on Office 365, for example, from uh, as a team. Um, or as a, as, as a SharePoint, Share, SharePoint collection. All right. Um, so, but I can also go even higher than, than this structure. I could create uh, a board collection that uh, consists of links that point to, uh, to, the, to, to, to the other board collection. So, so I, can, I can easily create a link and then I can I can just uh, uh, take a board collection like here uh, and then put it as a link here. And then I can have a level even above um, if, if I want to. So as you can see, Canva is very flexible and it allows you to create um, an, an information architecture that, that can, su can suit any, any, any complexity and, and, and any, any, any depth. All right, so let's get back to the presentation now. Okay, so let's see how we can organize work. So first of all, as I said, um, reflect on your or on your on your organizational structure, and then uh, you set up your board collections uh, in a way that 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 you know that fit your your organization. And uh, that could be you know, by by team, by client, by 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 the types of clients. I mean, you name it. Um, and the good thing about it is you can start with one with something and then if you find out it's not really practical then you can easily rearrange because uh, as you as you could see uh, adding existing boards uh, to new board collections is not a problem you can also uh, use drag and drop to rearrange them and so on okay so the next level um, will be then to create boards in those um, uh, board collections so I mean, depending on what you choose um, as your as your main structure. For example, if you if you choose um, if you choose um, a team, then uh, probably you would have uh, boards uh, with names like marketing, design, HR, and so on. But also, if you if you if you create a board collection uh, for let's say uh, to keep your sprints of uh, development of a certain product, 
then probably boards in that board collection would be sprints or you could have projects and so on. So um, here I can um, show you another example. Um, if I have, for example, a portfolio management, I have here uh, my portfolios, I have here my programs and I have my projects that belong to that program and the program belongs to that portfolio. So I have created here a structure that helps me to navigate um, if for, for this uh, specific portfolio for example, right? So, so you are, you are free um, in, in, in a way of, of constructing this as it should serve you as the main navigation uh, element as well. Okay, so this is this is this, and then obviously when you when you have a board, then um, you 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 should you should then uh, adapt the board to represent the, the flow of work you want to capture by by this by this board. So you could you could organize it by status. So for example, if you have a process, for example, an um, incoming invoice process or a work request process or or any other process that, that basically has stages then it's easy to it's, it's a very good idea to to do it with with status so so having like like to do doing waiting in approval and so on that would be your stages or if if you if you work with with with, with something else um maybe with cities and and, and you want to you want to see your buildings across the cities that maybe list would be a good idea you can always use uh, labels to categorize stuff so uh, uh, we will see an example in 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 a, in a minute that, that that shows you how to work with this yeah after your board is set up it's uh, then time to create cards in the board that will represent the work that you want in this board to be visualized and and, and worked on then obviously you can then inside of a card you can break it break it uh, into um, into smaller pieces using subcards or maybe to dos, upload the documents and so on, and then once you've done this uh, you can of course you can do it at, at, at every time after you have created the board you can you can invite the team members and you know um, give them the right permissions so then the team or the the the, the people that 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 have access to the board can start working on things there. Okay, and let's see let's see it now in in action. We go to uh, our departments now, and then we let's say we are a marketing team, and we want to create or organize a webinar. So for that, we will create a board, and um, we will call it. Um, since we, we, we do marketing in paper and we do marketing in, in digital, webinar will be a digital. So let's, let's create a digital um, sub area, area of, of marketing. All right. And um, so uh, it will, we, we will use a, a classic uh, a board uh, template for that. We, we will see in a second what it means. So let's add the board. Okay, so what we have here is a, is a simple board where you have, um, you know, the, 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 the classical um, Kanban uh, not started in progress uh, completed um, list. And then now um, let's, let's start uh, to feed it with, with cards. So first of all, we will uh, probably have to write um, a script for the webinar. Then um, um, probably send the inv invitations. Then prepare slides, run the actual webinar, and um, collect uh, and collect the stats, the, the statistics afterwards. Uh, okay, so now we have uh, we have our work, but I think um, just for the sake of this demo, I will go into send invitations and I will break down this one. So I will create a to do list here. And uh, we have to uh, for for sending invitations before we that before we do that we have to compile so we add them here right okay very good so now uh, we will invite some people to this to this board I will invite them as members. So let's take Diane, Catherine, Edward. Um, now I can assign the the work to the to the people. So 
he will write the script, she will send out the invitations, I will run the webinar as Marta and then he will also collect them, no, uh, she will collect the stats. All right. So once I have done that, um, you, uh, when I'm adding car, uh, people to, to cards, they automatically get notified and they start also to follow the cards. So when, for example, I open this card, um, you can see here uh, who is following the card where in the member sections. So now you see Diane is following. Uh, so she automatically is set to follow on a card when she's added to a card. So when I edit her, she received here um, a notification that will also be sent via email if she doesn't react to it in Canva. All right. So this is this is uh, the assigning people. So they get informed and they follow. Now we could uh, go ahead and um, uh, start to um, uh, plan it in in, uh, in 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 time. So to do this, I will uh, use the Gantt chart. And then I add the Gantt chart here with a new view. So I am adding a Gantt to this, to this, uh, to this board as an additional view. And I will not make it personal so everybody can see it. There you go. And I will move it uh, so it's not on the first position um, because everything that is in the first position in the views is automatically the default view. So I want uh, rather uh, the default view for this board um, to be the Kanban view. So I move it here. So uh, the default view is the view that is loaded uh, every time when you enter the, the board as, as the first view. And then in order to work in Gantt, I need um, uh, on each card uh, to have a start or a due date. So I will uh, now quickly, quickly um, uh, set everything for today uh, for this uh, sake. So I would just drag and drop it on the timeline. Right. So now I can go to the Gantt and I see uh, those tasks here. And now I can um, uh, adjust them in time, but I can also create dependencies. So which comes first, which comes next and so on. So obviously write the script is the first thing. And um, we, we want to start with this um, somewhere here. And it's probably going to take uh, uh, three days. This 8D means that this task, this task needs, has eight days to be completed. So from here to here is eight days. Uh, so you, you, you can always see on the, on the tasks in Gantt, how many days left until they get completed. So the next thing it will be sending invitations. So it's going to be, uh, uh, after we have the script and now we make a dependency. So um, this one is, is here. The next one is uh, uh, pre preparing slides. That will be another dependency. Let's make it here a little bit longer. And then, um, then the next one was was would be like when is the webinar planned for? It's planned for the twenty fourth. All right. So I make another dependency here and uh, then collect the stats obviously after okay then uh, we have also the last dependency here okay so now as we have our plan now um yeah everything is scheduled and if you open a card you can see when it's when it's due and and, and uh, it is orange because it's approaching. Um, if it's red, it's overdue. If it's gray, it's approaching, but very far in future. That's the color coding we are using for that. And obviously here on the timeline, you can also see uh, that uh, the first date is approaching here. If we click on that, you can see, okay, this symbol uh, stands for, um, for start date and it starts in six days. This one um, represents the, the, the date of due date. Uh, and it's, it ends in eight days um, and so on. So now people will start working on, on, on the, the tasks and they will just use drag and drop to move the cards in order to uh, make every, to let everybody know that 
um, they have started working on it. So, um, uh, and um, uh, what we have also done here uh, within this send presentation, as you could see, we have uh, we have uh, broken down this one, and uh, even here we can now, for example, um, assign those to dos uh, to other people, so they they know that they also are involved. So let's say I will add now another user to it, to this card, and um, this user will do this subtask. Um, I can also um, assign the subtask by mentioning here um, someone like that. Or I can even drag and drop from this, this one here. And the sending will be also done by her here. Okay. So that's, that's also uh, one possible way to uh, structure and 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 uh, break down the work and also assign those those little tank tasks here. So uh, the the more effort you put into the the more effort in, you put into the breaking down the the work, the the better reporting you get because uh, when people obviously start working on it and they complete some some of the of this work um, just by clicking on 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 in here. You will you will be able to see how far someone is with the tasks without having to ask them, um, and so on. So it saves time on both sides. Okay, so now after we have uh, created um, the the uh, tasks for the for the team, we have invited the team, we have assigned the work, we have scheduled the work uh, on the Gantt. Uh, we can now um, uh, use some other features of Canva in order to, you know, gain better visibility of what is going on in uh, in, a, in, a, in a project or in in a board. Uh, in order to do this, you can you can work with 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 further views. So, for example, one view that we could create now would be a view um, to uh, see the board by by uh, by, by by people. So when I change the group by to by users, then I see that there are no unassigned tasks and a Canva automatically creates um, lists representing each user. And then you can see uh, by user how many cards at this moment are assigned to uh, that user. And Mm, what 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 Canva also does, if you look carefully here at the at the top header of of every list, it also shows you how much actual work that is for this user catering here um, has been um, until now uh, finished. So it's twenty five percent of all work represented by those two cards is finished. This is a, a quite complex calculation that Canva does based on how many subtasks, how many subcards and cards uh, are here uh, and how, how many of them are completed. So that, that is one view and, and, and if you want to keep this view for later, you just, you just, you just uh, uh, go and, and save it as, um, as for example, um, uh, by users, as a view named by users. And um, let's push it again here so it's not the first one and then um, you, you could also uh, create some kind of a you know of a of a time horizon uh, view um, which uh, will allow us um, to see the world um, uh, through the, the the context of, of progress but um, I want to filter the cards now saying I want all cards that are due next week and um, I will use that view and I also save it as a new view due next week. So Obviously, as time passes by, different cards will be due next week. So, um, just by this, you can see that you can build uh, almost like dashboards uh, in, in, in boards, 
just using different parameters. So combining the group by feature with filters allow, and then saving them as views allows you to create different perspectives on the work um, that is contained by a board. And that's uh, what Canva is all about, giving the right perspective into, uh, right, into, for the right people uh, at the right time. And, and by using um, the views concept, you can have several um, representations of the work uh, and, and see it from different angles and then uh, make some informative, uh, so information-based decisions. All right, um, that is uh, basically how you break down uh, uh, work in, 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 a, in a board and, and assign people and, and, and place it in time. So, so now let's get back to our presentation. So the next topic I would like to show you today uh, are the board permissions. So before I show it to you in Canva uh, in, a, in the demo environment, first let's have uh, some uh, theory on this topic. So first of all, who can see what in Canva? How are the concepts? So it's actually pretty easy. First of all, we apply this what you see is what you get um, paradigm, which means if you have access to something, you see it. And if you don't have an access, you don't see it. Um, <clears throat> that means also it, it, or it also applies this security trimming into search. So if you uh, look for something or you, if you look for a card and this card matches your um, search criteria, but it exists in an area, for example, in a board that you do not have access to, the search will not f uh, f present you this result that otherwise, if you had access, uh, would be shown because it matches the, the criteria. So, so um, the concept is um, pretty solid and also um, consistent. So um, when you create a new board, uh, you, will, you will automatically be the board owner, which has automatically the highest permissions. Um, and um, that's why uh, you, when you create a board, can invite others and, and also change the, the structure of the board. Then um, obviously um, the owner can, can do everything and, 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 and the same concept applies also to board collections. And uh, it's also very important because it's asked by many customers um, if we can limit um, the view to or for some cards in, in, in a board. So let's say I have five users in the board and I have 20 cards and I would, I, I would like now um, to hide one specific card to uh, three of the users. So only two of those five can see it. And um, this is something which... Um, it's not supported by Canva, but it's not supported because we cannot do it. It's not supported because it's again, it's actually against the philosophy of transparency. So you should rather design the boards in a way that, um, um, you know, have uh, people have access to or not, uh, but not uh, if you have a board and you have information there that you hide it from them. That's why when someone gets access to a board, even on the, on the lowest level, which is the visitor level, um, he or she can see every detail, every information in that board um, because, uh, because it is important in, in our thinking that people have access to all available information of a certain context, which is represented by the board. So if you, if you have a problem uh, and you, you want to hide some information, um, probably you need to have a little bit different structure of boards in order to uh, to to meet your requirements, but still be conformed with this uh, with this uh, with this philosophical uh, or motto of ours, which says if you gain if you give access to someone in a board, then this person has access to all the information in the board. Uh, so another slide on 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 this. So what does it mean to be an owner? Um, so the owner is someone who owns the board, which means that he can delete it. He can, he can uh, also um, uh, close it, reopen it, uh, but also invite people, change uh, you know, the structure. So add boards, remove boards, add labels, uh, add statuses, and so on. So basically you can do anything. 
Then we have the second level um, in the board, which is the, the members level. And what, what members can do, um, they can basically do everything with cards. So owners create the room. They, 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 so if, if a board would be a room in, in a building, then the one who um, controls, uh, who can access and who cannot access is the owner. The one who brings in furniture, who, who designs the room, redecorates the room is the owner. And the member is the one who accesses the room and uses the room. So basically they can create cards, they can change cards, delete them, archive them, they can work on cards, they can write comments, they, they can do anything that is needed to basically do the work, but they cannot change the structure. And members also cannot add, add other members. And um, the lowest level uh, is the, the, the visitor level, which is someone who can basically come into the room, but uh, cannot, cannot can touch anything, but cannot change anything. Um, so the only thing that, that owners can do is obviously follow um, uh, certain cards, which then um, makes, uh, makes them notify if something changes in the cards, and they can also write messages. But uh, besides that, they cannot change any, anything, they cannot change documents, they cannot um, uh, move a card from one state to another, they, they cannot check a, a to-do item as marked, as, 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 as finished, and so on, they cannot change any date, they're, they're just visitors, they can only read and write uh, messages <clears throat> into the cards. So that's basically it. So how, how does it look uh, like in Canva? So if you go to the to the um, area of users, which you can access by clicking uh, users here or by clicking the last icon, you see those three groups. We have owners, that's uh, the only owner at the moment, maybe not so good because if this owner uh, is not available, holiday, maybe left the company, then there will be a problem with this board. So maybe I will also make this user just by dragging it up also an owner. So I have a second owner that can um, basically take over the job once the other uh, one is gone or not available. We have two members and we have no visitors. And by uh, just clicking on add, you can add uh, anyone from your organization that is licensed uh, to Canva. And um, as you can see, I can drag and drop them uh, between those groups in order to give them more or less permissions. So that's, that's, uh, that's it about um, uh, the permissions in Canva. So the next, uh, the next thing I would like to uh, introduce to you is the, 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 the way how you, um, and how you create statuses and uh, what they mean to, uh, to Canva because it's uh, sometimes not uh, uh, very clear um, uh, how they work. So first of all, we have to uh, make some, some things clear. So the, the statuses in a board um, that uh, you know, have names like uh, backlog, to do, doing, done, in approval, finished, archive, for archive, whatever. So basically they represent some kind of a state in which the work is in, they are First of all, just some random names that you can come up with. And it's actually a very good because you, you, can, you can find um, the words that are, that are used in your business, in your, uh, in your industry uh, for, for, for managing work. So in Canva, you can basically express yourself in a way how you really work. So if you, if you, if you work in a, in a marketing team, then you will probably have uh, different stages or different names for statuses of work uh, um, uh, compared to, for example, an accounting or, or, or engineering, um, which, which, they, which they, for example, do a lot of testing and quality gates and stuff like that. So that, that's a good thing, but, but um, uh, to Cambo, uh, that's just random names. So there is a way um to give those names a certain meaning so Canva starts to understand better what it means for a card to be in this status uh, for example in approval or finished uh, and, and stuff like that so so um for this we we use this so-called status roles and and there are four fundamental roles that i need to explain at this moment um so uh, the first fundamental role of, of uh, that a status can have, so basically a meaning, would be not started. So if you have a, a very good example for that is backlog. So if if you have a list in your in your in your board uh, that is called backlog, then 
probably that list should have a role, so meaning, uh, now it started. So Kanban knows each card in this list, backlog, that has a meaning not started, represents work and that, that hasn't started yet. Um, that is used later for, you know, for reminding people that something is late or for the analytics. That's, that's why, why the meaning makes sense uh, to, to implement uh, when you, when you want to get more out of Campbell. So the next one is, is obviously in progress. So if you have something like doing, in approval or, um, uh, you know, something in quality gate or uh, testing or whatever status, uh, that's probably uh, the meaning of being in progress. So this work represented by a card in one of those lists that I just ex exemplary named is in progress. So Kanban understands, aha, this card is being worked on. So for example, um, uh, probably the, 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 um, the start date, uh, doesn't make, uh, it doesn't have to be observed anymore because it's already in progress. Um, and there are some other things also uh, mounted. It. And the, the last stage of work, which is the completed stage with another, some examples for, for lists like that could be, you know, finished, uh, in German fertig, um, or, um, um, for archive or, uh, sent out to customer, whatever, whatever status of work has this meaning that it is completed, that it's now finished, um, uh, should have the role completed. And there's one very, um, very interesting role, uh, meaning, which we uh, name uh, none. It's called none because um, when you create a list uh, or a status and you, and, and you give it the, the meaning none, that means that all cards in this status represent uh, um, something else than work so probably information so if you have informational cards in your in your in your Kanban, for example i i, I usually uh, create first a first list in in in, in, in Kanban, information about the product or the, the project or or a team and and all cards in in in, in this status um, they will not be considered by Kanbo as work. They will be just information. So there will be no reminders. There will be no late dates if you create some dates in there because Kanbo doesn't see cards contained by the status as actual work. Okay, so let's, let's have a look how it, how it looks like. So in this, uh, in this um, uh, board, we have already uh, something that is uh, a status not started in progress and in, in, in completed. And you can see that by those little icons here. So not started has the stop button in progress. Uh, so if, 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 if there is something in a role um, uh, um, in progress, then, then you have this play button and then you have a, um, a completed button with the check, check, with the check mark. So let's say I want to add now uh, an informational list to this uh, board. So what I do is I go to statuses settings, statuses, and now I add a new status, uh, which I called uh, information, let's say uh, info, and uh, I will um, give it the, the, the status role none, and maybe I will make it black. Okay, great, and I remove it up. So um, this, is the, this is the status, so when I create a card here in this, um, in this status saying like, for example, um, uh, agency X contact info. And here I will now place some, you know, some information about how to contact our agency that does whatever, something for the newsletter, maybe, you know, the graphics or whatever. So this is uh, now having the, st the status info and it's not uh, considered by Kanbo as work. And um, for another uh, um, demonstration, let's add another status, which will be the status um, called um, uh, for approval, for example. So I add uh, for approval and what is the meaning for being an approval is it not started is it is it uh, in progress is it completed yes probably in progress because it's, it's, it's it, for, for approval is um, is something that needs to be improved 
and then uh, but it's still being being in progress so let's edit let's move it now to here so now we see we have a uh, let's call it a backlog so now you see we have a status which is called backlog and the meaning is not started we have a we have a we have a status which is called in progress which is the meaning it's in progress we have another another status which is called for approval but the meaning is also in progress and we have um, a completed one which maybe we will rename to finished but the meaning is finished so um, you can create statuses that have names of your industry of your of your of your you know company internal wording so once you give those statuses some meanings Canva starts to to give you more more features for example um, when you see um, the start date here when something is in the backlog like here so then if you don't start so if you don't move this card by the 14th of june it will become red because then Canva says Oh, listen, this card should start by the 14th, but it's still in the list or in a, in a status, which is called backlog, which means it's not started. That, that, that is why, why it, it becomes late. So I can show it to you here when I change the date to the 7th, for example. Then you can see the date is now red. It is red. Why? Because it is in a list in a status which is which 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 meaning is not started so when i move it now to in progress now the date is gray it's not not red anymore which is which which is the feedback of the system listen everything is okay because now it is in progress the same will happen uh, with the with with the due date so now as long as as you are in progress here or here it will show you okay soon this 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 will be this will be um uh due but uh, the same the same here when i change now the date um, yeah also to the to the seventh so it's in, in in the past so you see now the date is red why because the card is not finished because it is still in one of the lists which is which meaning is um in progress so it's showing you listen this card is already late and when i move it now to finished now everything is is, is gray okay which is okay and also the card now has a little icon showing indicating that the card is finished and when i open the card i can even see who has completed the card because this information is automatically generated from the last action from the last movement of the card uh, to a list which or to a status which meaning it is uh, uh, that something is completed so you can always uh, see who completed the card and and when the card was completed that is only possible obviously when you give your statuses also some meaning another uh, thing that that also profits from from the meaning is when you when you work with with analytics which you can open here uh, you can you can you can turn it on here so now when I when I when I look into the board in, and I want to see uh, a dashboard, then now suddenly Canva understands if something is completed, if something is not started, um, and uh, so when I when I move another card to doing, maybe two cards, when I go back to analytics, then you see Canva is able to understand where everything stands and so on because uh, of the meaning of the statuses so when i when i finish something and again you immediately see um, that the numbers change uh, but it's only possible if you if you give um, the the status also some some meaning so that's why uh, it is uh, quite important to um, to think about it and 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 when you create new statuses also to to the equipment with the, with the right meaning and you can see the symbols here
All right. So let's get back to the to the uh, uh, to, to continue the presentation. Good. The, um, the next point is um, this uh, kind of work you you might be receiving in your in your company, and let's uh, let's see how we can well, how we can help you with Canva to, to deal with this. So first of all, we have this kind this type one which uh, we call the frequent and simple work. An example, you know, you you have a very simple piece of work and you want to um, to give it someone uh, um, to be done. And um, it's, uh, uh, for example, an icon that you will now give to uh, to the creative team, to the marketing team, or whatever, and to the graphics the graphics team, and they will they will they will create the icon for you. How do you do with this? How do you how, what do you use in Canva? You use the card template feature. So uh, uh, how does it work? So um, let's uh, let's just for the example, let's take this this card send, send invitations, right? And we want to create out of this uh, card a template. So next time when someone is um, sending invitations, um, they can reuse this card. So uh, let me now create a template of it. So I will now create a, the card template. I will call it send invitations template. Create one. Voila, it looks like a normal card, but it has this template meaning here. So I will now um, make this remove uh, all of this so that it is neutral uh, okay and then also remove the due dates here and yeah that's that's basically it and it started this this backlog okay so next time uh if you have this um this frequent but simple work, you can just go ahead and say, I will create now a new item here of template, whatever, in actions two. And then when I when I see, when I open the card, I see immediately that the card is already pre-populated with uh, whatever needs to be done uh, for this. So this is how you can, you can uh, prepare uh, for receiving more and more work and then creating those card templates will help you uh, to um, to deal um, with, the, with the work that is coming in much more easier. Okay, the second type of work is the frequent and complex work. So for example, you are attending a trade fair um, or you are organizing an event or whatever, um, something that really is, is very complex and very complicated and, and, and you need um a lot of people and, and a lot of coordination and stuff like this so how do you do how do you deal with this kind of work in candle for that we recommend to uh, create e uh, board templates uh and and also use uh, this um, invite external users functionality how, how so how does it work here um the example so um for this for this kind of for this kind of work um it is it is uh, it is easy it is, it is it is good to understand that we could have actually two types of board templates so one 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 board template um um what one board template type is this type where you have a process uh, that is that is that is contained by this, this board template so for example if you have a, for example a vac vacancy process or uh, um, issue a management process or um, something like that so something that actually is where well, the template only contains the process itself but not actual work so uh, for that i have a template here um which is uh, which is the template for vac vac vacancy yeah so when, when i open this you see i don't have any cards in here I have only the process. I have also uh, the, the the labels um, and so on, but I don't have any cards. So when I create um, a new board, so let, let me go now to the department of, uh, yeah, let's take a marketing or let's maybe create another group, HR. And they, they, they will have here um, another, put it down. And I will create now a new board of a template uh, vacancy. Voila, and I, I take it like, I, I call it like, um, right, maybe a different color. There we go. So now I'm creating a template. Uh, I'm creating a board 
um, that has a very complex process. It contains all the elements to deal with new um, with, with new um, uh, uh, you know job vacancies and so on. But uh, I will have to create them first. The second type of um, of a, a board template that can be used for for frequent and complex work is a board template where you have already a pre prepared set of work to be executed. So for that, I will create another board from a template which is called the digital event. So I have a digital uh, uh, digital uh, um, uh, conference. And um, for here, I, let's say I, I will call it conference. Yeah, I want to create a new one. There we go. So now uh, I am I am I am uh, having two boards created. They will be finished in a second. I will I will, I will show you. Yeah, there there we go. So we have now this one. So now you see I have a new board vacancies from Germany. This this is empty. But this template also brings um, the, the the right views and, and 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 everything that I need. Also the labels, but. It also brings the card templates. So when I need to create a new open position that I want to fill, I just go and create a new card. And there is already in the, the board template, there's already a card template. And I have an open position. Let's say I am looking for an accountant. There you go. And when I open it, it already has a predefined structure how uh, I should deal with this uh, uh, for, for opening um, a, a position. Uh, so I need to describe the position. I need to, you know, uh, add some supporting documents, maybe list the requirements, and so on. So, so it already contains even a list for me, or, so I don't forget anything when I'm creating a new position. And then I can also, you know, use some labels here, accounting, for example. And um, the same when I when I receive a CV, I, I use another template applicant and say John is the one who applied. So again here. I have a different structure um, when I'm dealing with a with a with the applicant. So now um, the, the the applicant can go through the process until you know he you know gets hired or not. So th this kind of, of board we call the processual board or processual uh, board template. And let's have a look in the in the other one. So let's go back to our departments. So see here you see that the board is already pre-populated with work. So in the first view, I see all teams um, and they, they work, they need to do. And if I change the view um, by progress, so where we stand, you see that I have now lots of work items that needs to be now assigned to people, then planned in time and coordinated and, and so on and so on. And I can use, you know, the gunshot for that and, 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 and I can invite people here and then start um, distributing the work, but at least I have a starting point and I have, um, I have now a board that has all the tasks that, that probably need to be done when we organize a conference or if we do something that is complex and, and, and frequent. So I, 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 I don't forget things and, and, um, I also can put some, some knowledge, uh, lessons learned from the last project of the last conference into the into, into the board template so next time I can I can profit from from that knowledge okay so this is the type two type three would be you know something that is happens sometimes but it's uh, it's it's a very simple work so for that it's um, actually um, I have a board here uh, for that uh, so let's say I have an IT department that you know they are preparing a big change and um, there is a small task where we, they need like to, to 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 work out what will be the communicate what will be the message to the company um, that this change now has an impact and and so on and so on so for that I um, uh, create a card let's say change uh, seventy five that is the big change that uh, our department is working on so I am working there with some colleagues on that card. And this is now in doing, and then we find out. Okay, listen, we need uh, also to work on this uh, communication plan. So what I do is I will create a sub uh, sub card um, to deal with this. So the the, the kind of feature is used for for that type of work is is, is for example a, a sub card. So I go there, I, I um, create a chat card group, 
Um, and then uh, I can give it a name and then I will create here a new subcard in this board in the, to, in, in the list to do and I will name it a communication plan. There we go. The card is now created um, and it's like the subcard of, of, of this one. And um, here, for example, I can even already assign the person that will, will work uh, with me on this on this plan. So you can see the card here, but you can also see it as part of this. And now um, we can, you know, um, go into the communication plan and then maybe set uh, a due date um, when it's, it's going to be finished. And then we move it to doing. So everybody knows that we you know, started working on, on this card. So this is uh, how you could you could you can you can you know uh, um, deal with the infrequent um, uh, simple work that maybe a part, is a part of uh, something bigger. We're coming to an end uh, of today's webinar, and there's uh, three basic principles I would like to to give you on 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 the way. So basically, if you know if if someone comes to you and wants wants you to do something for him or for her or whatever, then please create a card in Canva, in some board, um, in order to, uh, uh, you know, have a note of it and, and also use it to, um, to ask questions about this, this, uh, this thing and also uh, mark it as completed so the other person knows. The same, if you have an idea and you want to do something, also create a card in Canva, describe your idea, um, set a date or whatever elements you need in order to have a place once you maybe later delegate this, this task or um, you, you share it with others so others can see you, how far you are with the idea and that the idea even exists. That's the way how you can visualize it. The same here. If, if someone, uh, you know, uh, if you want someone to do something for you, just create a card, describe exactly what you want, maybe even break down the work you want to be done. The more effort you put into the card, uh, the better is the, is, the, is the feedback then of someone who does something for you because he only needs to, to check, you know, the, the predefined um, checkboxes uh, introduced. And that's why that, that, that is how he, um, you know, gives you feedback. How far is this work if it's finished or maybe if, if there's a question, there's also a place to ask um, the, the questions about it. So um, basically by, by doing, uh, by following these, these three basic principles, you will end up creating a lot of transparency and a lot of trust in your team, in your department, maybe if you use Canva globally, also in your entire organization. And this is what, what our uh, customers, our enterprise customers also experience, is that suddenly there is less meetings, there is definitely less emails, there's more progress, there's more time for the actual work. So, yeah. That, that will be it for, for today. Uh, I just want uh, here to uh, give you a little reminder that we have uh, many templates, board templates uh, on our website. You can find them there and you can download them and uh, upload it to your Canva and then uh, use them maybe as inspiration or as, as, as ideas for, for your uh, work, daily work. So please go there and 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 um, and download uh, them. That, that, that download these which interest you. And yeah, that will be now the time for uh, our questions. Let's see what questions uh, have popped.